No, it's not bad uh, if you cry a lot during your pregnancy. So pregnancy is a time when we have heightened emotions um, and research shows that it's a time where we're more attuned um, to others and to how others interact with us. So, you know, it might be natural uh, that you cry a bit more during pregnancy. There's also lots going on during pregnancy. You know, during your first trimester, you might be feeling low in energy. Uh, you might be feeling sick. Um, your body starts to change. Um, you're dealing with changes in your identity. You're trying to communicate things to people um, that might be difficult for you to communicate. Um, you might be feeling joy one moment and then feeling sadness the next. Um, and that's all you know to do with the journey of pregnancy. And as you move closer to meeting your baby, that can feel quite overwhelming. You know, it's a huge life-changing moment to welcome a baby into the world. Um, and it comes with lots of changes in relationships. So in relationships um, with your partner, with other support people in your life, with your family of origin. Um, and so you're trying to grapple with all of this and accept all these changes as your body is changes, changing and as you're preparing to give birth. So, um, you know, if, if tears come, just allow them to come and try and give yourself a space um, to feel whatever it is you're feeling and just noticing that and maybe naming it. Um, and then just taking a few breaths, allowing yourself um, to feel whatever it is you're feeling. Now, if over you know a couple of days or weeks, um, that kind of those tears are there on a relatively consistent basis, or you're feeling very down or sad, um, then it might be that you need some additional support. Um, so you might be experiencing low mood or an antenatal depression. Um, and in that case, so if, if it's going on and it's not changing and, and you really are feeling sad, um, I would encourage you to contact ourselves um, and we will um, give you support around that. So this, this is a kind of an interesting question because of course we all want to be able to control, control our emotions at times. Um, and I suppose sometimes emotions crop up when we least want them to. Um, so what I would say is the way to experience emotions is to try and let them come and just watch them and develop a relationship with them where you're, you're almost kind of welcoming them in because we can't stop our emotions from coming. Our emotions are a whole body system. But what we can do is we can change how we respond to them or how we react to them um, or how we behave when an emotion comes up. So all emotions have a function. They're all there for a reason. Um, so for example, anxiety is there to help us avoid threat. Um, anger is there to help us protect ourselves. Sadness is there to let us know that something is important. Um, so when an emotion comes, what we can do is validate it um, and then try and figure out what it's telling us um, so that we can meet the need um, that it's giving us information about. Um, sometimes emotions can be overwhelming and that can be really difficult to deal with. Um, so if you are experiencing emotions that are you know, difficult, uh, what I would suggest is trying to identify your own resources. So who are the people you can talk to? Who are your support people? Um, what are things that you can do for yourself that make you feel good? So how do you soothe yourself? Um, and oftentimes we'll use the five senses to soothe ourselves. So maybe something like taking a bath or going for a walk or putting on a fresh pair of pajamas and snuggling up in a nice blanket and reading a book, but things that make you feel good about yourself. Um, or for some people, when emotions are, are difficult, what they might choose to do is a bit of distraction. So they might really enjoy um, going to a yoga class or going for a swim 
or going for a walk or doing Sudoku or a crossword, whatever it is that, that works for you. But just having those different resources that you can use um, when emotions come up and, and they're kind of causing you um, difficulty. So there's lots of different psychological treatments for postnatal depression. Um, so for some people, what they might need is some additional support, so perhaps some listening visits um, from our mental health midwives. Um, for other people, they might need an intervention like cognitive behavioural therapy or compassion-focused therapy or some sort of a psychological intervention where we're working on um, reducing the symptoms of the depression using um, a talk therapy or using um, skills which you've learned or using a behavioural approach. Um, so for each individual, the treatment might be tailored slightly differently depending on their needs. Um, but a psychological therapy can work really well for postnatal depression, either as a standalone or in conjunction with a medication.